Hey guys, it's your best five friends. I'm Kelsey, that's Rachel. And we're here to have a chat. Have a fireside chat. There's no fire. <laughs> we're gonna have a chat about <laughs> uh, what's going on in the UFC oh, and the heavyweight happened? division. What happened? Man, they did it. The UFC finally made Francis Ngannou versus John Jones. Psych! That's not the fight. You don't even get Francis Ngannou versus Derek Lewis. You're getting Derek Lewis versus Cyril Gaon for the interim heavyweight championship at UFC 265, I think it is, on August 7th here in Houston. Rachel, what do you think about that move? Let me say, here's my here was my quick reaction. My initial reaction was, <gasps> first of all, <My> was <gasps> interim in an, an interim title in the with the current state of the heavyweight division like what like what are you doing UFC like trying to be boxing I don't understand UFC you are your own little <laughs> like world there's no reason for these like ridiculous I want to say ridiculous but superfluous titles to even exist I would find it admirable if the UFC would would just hold like ground or hold space for like here's our titles and this is serious and but what I've learned since becoming a fan of MMA is that in the UFC maybe that's not the case because even the rankings sometimes don't make sense <laughs> maybe the UFC it's almost like the UFC is a business <laughs> wants to make money wants to promote and market yeah. and throwing a yeah. A uh, title trinket out there, and I—I I mean, I know people. It still means something because it it's when you say these two are fighting for the interim title, it says something about those two. Why are you saying that yeah. about those two? Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're not intending to say anything. You just want to make money. No, but it people does. thinks that it means something about these two. You know, so you you're not giving an interim title fight to maybe guys ranked 14 and 15. Curtis Blades and Alexander Volkov, who just lost. Right. right. But you're you're doing something so so I get that. I just I would prefer Rachel's the type of person that would prefer let's keep the title situation clean. And Francis Nagano just won the title from Stipe. Yes, he won it yesterday. It's not like Francis <laughs> Nagano has like broken his arm or or is going to be out of action for, you know, longer than, I mean, a year. Or I don't know what the the, well, yeah, the premise big... is for, for when you drag out that interim title shot. But I know this, it hasn't happened in the UFC heavyweight division. Right. Actually, we've all been waiting for the official fight to be announced of Francis's first defense of the title. What? So let's give Dana White the benefit of the doubt. For once. Let's do it for once, Rachel. Let's just do it for one time. What if the reason they're making the Strogon versus Derek Lewis fight is because really they want to make the fight between John Jones and Francis Ngannou? I'm fine with that. <laughs> my my quick reaction was about that interim title. Okay, I actually let me... am completely fine with Derek Lewis and Cyril Ghosn okay, being well, the ones who what fight What about next. this? And I was like, that totally leaves the door open that maybe... Naganu Jones is going to what actually What about happen. this? What about what if I said that the whether it's an interim title or not really doesn't have it doesn't matter, right? We I know that people like to get upset about the idea of it. And even Francis Naganu is like, hey, Stipe Miocic only fought once per year the last three years, right? And I had to wait around. You didn't let me fight for the interim champion. Well, here's what they're doing. All this means, essentially, it doesn't take anything away from Nganyu, who'll still be the UFC heavyweight champion. All it does is it allows the UFC to promote a heavyweight title fight here in Houston where Derek Lewis lives. It makes the tickets a lot easier to sell. They're already easy to sell, I think. But I'm saying that, that, it, that it's a promotional tool, and the winner of that fight would already probably get the heavyweight championship fight for undisputed status against Francis. Well, it just makes it an even bigger fight now and a bigger fight in the future because then you're like oh undisputed champion right i think it makes good sense from a business point of view from that point of view from the promotions point of view and it doesn't really take anything away from naganyu or anybody else if you really think about it i agree that yeah in practice like it does it what i don't like i don't like that it's called the interim title you don't look, because yeah. that implies that there's an interim 
that there's there's something not happening in the heavyweight division, right. and that's just flat out not the case. You want to call it? I mean, have it be like gold, silver, bronze. Like this is the the runner up in the division. Have do that. Like I'm totally fine with making this marketable. You know, this is a pay per view. You want your main event to be a title, right? Like you want it to have some. I, I totally get all that, but the words mean something, and this is called the interim title belt. And if I was Francis, like he's expressed, he's not happy, I would also be like, hey, you know, I might feel slighted. Like, what what is going on? I'm just waiting. You know, anyway. The biggest news to me, the thing that you maybe I think you could legitimately take the biggest issue with is that it seems like from the ESPN report from Brett Okamoto is that they wanted him to fight in June. They wanted Lewis and Nganu to fight in June. And then they were like, oh, okay, we can move to August. And then Nganu was like, well, I can be ready in September. And they were like, nah, <laughs> we're going to let Cyril Khan jump in here now. That to me seems a little bit Well, except like that they practice. didn't say That's what nah. Ariel Hawani said. Basically. Directly to Nagano yeah. and his Well, team. but Dana White, okay, according to Dana White on Instagram, they did tell their men. So there, we don't, we only get what people we say. We don't really know what happened. We don't know about all the people that are involved and all they they're talking all the time about what. This is a reoccurring happened. thing with the UFC. But what's is in that combat people, sports? <laughs> that people. Uh, say things on so publicly on social media, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. nothing for the audience on social media is provided to be like, oh, this is actually what happened. Instead, like everybody, we're going to talk about it. Everybody's going to talk about it, right? Everybody has their opinions, and then we'll just move on to the next thing. I think the best news that I can give you right now is Derek Lewis versus Cyril Gone. That's a heck of a fight. <laughs> I'm excited about that fight, and particularly because everybody knows Derek Lewis is awesome. He knocks people out. He's great. Title challenger. Could become the champion. Well, Cyril Gaon looks like a bazillion dollars to me. He look, He's only 9-0, Rachel, I think, in M- across MMA. He hasn't been fighting that long. And he's already like winning every round versus Alexander Volkov, right? Who we just saw looked as good as he's ever looked in his last fight. A guy who was beating the brakes off Derek Lewis for the whole fight until he got knocked out at the last minute, right? In that fight a couple years ago. I think that Cyril Gaon is the future of the division, and we get to see if he's ready now against the present of the division, Derek Lewis, who's one of the best fights. I'm excited about the fight. Rachel! I'm excited uh, to see Cyril Gaon again yeah. so soon in action. Yeah. Because, I mean, I just saw him, and it's... The end of June, and now I'm going to see He's him. He's so clean in and precise, and such a good athlete. So that's a clean turnaround. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to see Derek Lewis fight that much, so I'm not. I don't know how good of a fighter he is. So, I feel like you mean you don't remember the times you've seen Derek Lewis fight. I, I said I haven't seen saying. him fight that much, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel. You've seen him as many times as you fight. Seen him fight zero Khan fight. Well, when I saw Serial, when I saw Gone, (laughs) Serial, when I saw him fight, it was very clear that he was very skilled. Oh well, yeah. Well, Derek. I guess what I'm saying is when I've seen Derek, but you do know this. Derek is completely different. He he looks terrible, and then he knocks you out with one punch. (laughs) Right? I mean, he's like such his ability to throw and land his power punch, which is his right hand. From a long distance away on a moving target and land it. And doesn't he have to land it clean and to yeah. separate? He's gotten more knockouts than anybody else in UFC history. That is a special talent. I cannot wait to see that versus the pristine the pristine, pristine, and precise skill of Cyril Gaon and, the, frankly, the inexperience of Cyril Gaon. Like, this is an interesting fight. Yeah. I will say, regarding this whole matter of the, you know, Dana said this, we said we fight in September, then he did it, blah, 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 all this stuff. Is that one bit of information that came out? It seems like Eri Hawani shared some uh, information that he had from his observances and covering the UFC for so long. And I liked one of the things that he said where he pointed out that a lot of this blame gets put on Dana White. Because he's the face. Because he's the face of the UFC. And when you become the face of something, you kind of, like, you take the blame, right? Um, We know the President of the United States often gets blamed for things that. He doesn't have direct control over some of these things that the president is blamed for. And 
And so I thought that was interesting. And then Ariel went ahead and like parsed out like, okay, here's other people involved. And here's somebody who actually makes all these matches. This is a person who is wheeling and dealing kind of behind the scenes. And it's not even actually Dana. So I like bringing in that like sense of, uh, of uh, balance to the, the whole situation because it can be easy to get, be like, whoa, what was this? And like point your finger and like get all upset. But And, and we're seeing the people involved do this, right? Yeah. Naganu's team, Dana White, who, who would, like these people, I'm like, why do we do this publicly on social media? I still like won't understand this as being part of an organization and business, except that, oh my gosh, does it keep people writing and talking about your business that you're making money in. Rachel's business would not make any money because I would run things like just even and we would do things and it would be straightforward and direct and I'd probably go out of business very soon because no writers would be writing about me. One more point on I think the human condition and the shortest little like a little macro system I would like to display here. Just talk about here quickly. My favorite thing is on social media like if you go to where Dana and why it lashed out at Francis and Connie's manager on Brad Okamoto's Instagram page in the comment section. In the comments. Okay, here come all these other comments from just randos, right? Just UFC fans, just people out there. And all the, if you read through them, like it's so crazy to me um, to see all these people out there who believe that they, their opinions are. Like, they should be telling Dana White how to run the UFC, a guy that, that wouldn't. The UFC MMA probably wouldn't exist the way it does today without Dana White mm -hmm. coming in and buying the UFC. And I think it's interesting because I do the same thing. We all do the same thing. Like, whenever there's somebody that makes a decision, well, I'm really, Kelsey McCarson really doesn't have a whole lot of business, you know, having all these strong opinions, and yet I do. It's so interesting to me, and you guys do too. I love it. I love being part of this little world. Let it's me just play like uh, devil's advocate here. And for these people that write piled in on the comments of Brett Okamoto's post, uh, where Dana White and the uh, commented, they're also, we're not getting, social media is not a platform for somebody to share their very full and opinion about a matter, right? So although people were very quickly sharing their opinions, that may not be all of what they they think and feel on the matter. Like it could just be like that quick not. reaction. So I just don't want to put all that on these people of like, oh, they're they're telling Dana White how to run his business. Well, like they share an opinion in this moment, but I don't think it represents all of like, them. I feel like now that you've been so charitably kind, kind to these commenters, you should go read some of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, just because I don't communicate in the same way other people do. It's funny. But you have just as many people who are taken up for Dana White. That are yeah. Like, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like little tribes. So interesting. It's just really interesting to me. I just doesn't really bring it up. Yeah, it is interesting. It, I think it's super um, good to be aware of this kind of uh, factions that, that form. Or they're binary, like I'm right, you're wrong, good, bad. Like it's uh, it's helpful for me to be aware of that because I don't need to be part of either or. Like well, I don't need to be part of either faction. I can remove myself and be at peace. But the last thing I'll leave with you is Brett Okamoto is even just as beautiful in person. <laughs> How do you know this? Because I've seen him in person. <laughs> okay. You just wanted to share that with all of us? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we think that you are beautiful. We don't know if you are in person. No, I do know that you are. Unless you I've specifically met you in person, then I think that you're beautiful. I've been watching you. What? Kelsey has seen all of you in person. I hope that you guys know Through that. Through my mental vision. <laughs> hey, thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. If you are tuning into our podcast, make sure to leave a review and subscribe. Start we'll... it with better than Joe Rogan's podcast, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. We will talk to you next time. Bye.